It is 6.30. The date is May the 28th, 2024. This is the regular city council meeting of the city of Rockport. I'll ask you to stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilwoman Rangel. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Have a seat. Before we start business and so forth, in a few minutes, we will establish presence of quorum by roll call, Ward 1. Here. Ward 2. Here. Ward 3. Here. Ward 4. Here. Mayor, here. First time on the agenda is promotion of two individuals in the police department to new ranks and new positions for them, and the police chief, who was also promoted here lately, <laughs> and, it, and it's a privilege to have him back with us. So these men, um, they actually were promoted within our department um, just this just this past week because we got we had business to get to. So so we had a big busy weekend over this past weekend. They were promoted just this past weekend. It went into effect Saturday. And so I wanted to give recognition to these to these men for the for the accomplishments that they've done. And so. Uh, Captain Payne is, is on my far side over here. Captain Payne came to us from Victoria Police Department. Um, he's been with us for, for two years now, and, and he's got a very similar background to, to me whenever I was in Lubbock. And so he, he was a, a sergeant, a supervisor over there, Special Operations Division, their Narcotics Division. Spent a lot of time managing people and, and managing operations. And so he was a perfect fitting for our criminal investigations division. So now he, he's gonna be heading our criminal investigations division and, and our detectives within the department. Right. So we're, we're happy to have him on the department. So this is Captain Payne. Um, Lieutenant McKeska, he came with us from, uh, his history is also with the Victoria Police Department. And then he went into private practice for several years. And then, uh, and then we picked him up from the Shiner Police Department and where he was a supervisor with them. He has a lot of supervisor experience. Um, he does some advanced leadership training as well whenever he was with the Victoria Police Department. And so he was also a perfect fit to uh, supervise one of our patrol divisions. And, uh, and so that's what he's doing now. He's gonna be the supervisor of one of our patrol divisions, soon to be going to nights pretty soon, right? during the summertime, which is a great time to do it. So I wanted to introduce and recognize these two men. It's Captain Payne and Lieutenant McKeska. Gentlemen, so. we're proud to have you. Thank you very much. Great to have you the party. Next time on the agenda is citizens to be heard. At this time, comments limited to three minutes will be taken from the audience from persons who have signed their speaker's card located at the table in the back of the training room of the service center and delivered to the city secretary before the meeting begins or written comments received by 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting on any agenda item or any other subject matter will be read in the meeting. Persons wishing to address the council and who have registered using the citizen participation form will have up to three minutes to speak. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the council may not discuss or take action on any item that has not been posted on the agenda. While civil public criticism is not prohibited, disorderly conduct or disturbance of the peace is prohibited by law shall be caused for the chair to terminate the offender's time to speak. I have two cards. The first one, Malcolm Deco. If you'd come up and give your name and address, and be sure that the microphone's picking you up, Malcolm. Thank you, Mayor. Name is Malcolm Deco, 611 Wood Street here in Rockport, Texas. I'm the chairman of the Aransas County Navigation District. And I have been asked to read this to you all, and that's what I'm going to do. 
Today, the Aransas County Navigation District voted to reject the city's latest proposal in its current form, but remains hopeful to reach an agreement with the city council. More than two years ago, the city of Rockport announced plans to run an additional stormwater drain into Rockport Harbor. The Aransas County Navigation District, the agency charged by the state of Texas and citizens of Rockport, who serves as the conservator of the Aransas County coastline, was not included in the planning and has raised serious environmental, economic, and health concerns. All were disregard, uh, disregarded by the city in their determination to increase the stormwater discharge directly into the water bodies that are vital to our community, that being Rockport Harbor. Over the years, the district has made three appropriate offers, all of which were rejected. All of the district's initiatives were also rejected or ignored. The city of Rockport, once again, without any environmental or engineering studies, has announced a plan to force the district into accepting additional stormwater that would include large qualities of silt, chemicals, and other runoff from significant areas of the city. They plan to implement this through Veterans Park while still refusing to conduct an environmental study. Such environmental and engineering ex several environmental and engineering experts are skeptical of the city's assertions that there will be no damage from an additional three by six culvert carrying stormwater into its contents into Rockport Harbor. In addition, no proof of the city's assertions have been provided. The city has only provided the district and the citizens of Rockport with verbal assurances that nothing in their plan could possibly go wrong, all the while refusing to put this guarantee in writing. The city is now threatening to condemn a portion of Veterans Memorial Park Meetings have been held with the city by the district to find a solution and do the right thing. However, the city has refused to take any responsibility for any consequences of this ill-advised action. The city cannot stand by and allow the harbor to be formally degraded. The Aransas County Navigation District unanimously opposes the condemnation of the Veterans Memorial Park property and the additional extensive discharge of some stormwater chemicals associated kill, uh, silt, and other unknown waste into the harbor. The district is committed to fighting the condemnation lawsuit on behalf of the citizens to protect our precious coastline, Rockport Harbor. We implore you to cease this ill-advised condemnation action and engage in, engage in meaningful di dialogue with the district. The district stands ready to find a resolution. By doing so, this community can avoid huge litig litigation costs that would better be spent on environmental studies and protocols necessary to prevent such detrimental action. <laughs> That's what I was required to read, and now let me state, I know I'm running out of time, that we came a lot closer to reaching an agreement than we've ever been before. But simply, we run out of time. Now it's in the hands of the lawyers. I have nothing against lawyers, but I'd rather stay here to reach an agreement than have the lawyers. Thank I you, am still available to continue this negotiation. There's really only one or two sticking points, and I offer my services at any time to anybody here uh, to get this done without making the lawyers richer than they already are. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Member. Next item on the agenda is consent agenda. The following items may be acted upon in single motion, no separate discussion or action on any of these items will be held unless pulled from the at the request of one of the members of the council. Does anybody wish to remove either of these items from the agenda? I we sure do. I beg your pardon. I have got another card here. They brought it to me a little while ago and I said I can't read it. Shiloh Mitchell. And I should have known you were right back there. I should have seen you. Thank you for accepting my request to speak. Um, I'm here just as a citizen of Rockport to tell you all thank you so much for your service. I know you don't get told thank you enough, so thank you to Ms. Shelley, number one, for rescheduling the hot funds orientation. That was a huge relief to those of us that had plans for graduation, and she deserves some kudos for that. And I just want to stand here and tell you all thank you, because you're amazing. You serve our community in amazing ways, and I have two minutes and 33 seconds to tell you about that. Andrea, thank you for all the ways that you serve the community in your award. 
Mr. Bundra, I don't know your first name. Thank you for the ways you serve your community in your ward. You did have lunch at Houdat today. I'm sorry I didn't get by your table and say hi. Mayor, I see you everywhere I go. Thank you for the ways you serve. Mr. Ward 2, I don't know anything about you, but I will Google you tonight. Miss Stephanie, thank you for all the ways you serve our community. And I'd like to share with you our friend that was in the motorcycle accident last October came to visit last week and drove himself home. So I won't bore anybody else. Ms. Vanessa, thank you. I don't know everyone else's names. Thank you. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. I believe I have some important information to share with, uh, with everyone. Honorable Mayor, City Council, this uh, City Manager, staff, and fellow citizens. I'm Doug Webb, 130 Lamar Drive. Pause. I think that if I would say Edward Law Firm, many would say in capital letters, we know the law. Pause. I'm Deb Webb. I know fishing. I have been here for 70 years, fishing here for 70 years, and I've seen it all. Presently, our fishery is weak, and our trout, red, our trout fishery is weak. Our redfish fishery is only average. I have an RV park, and I have multiple serious fishermen. They use artificial, they use live shrimp, and they use, most of them use croakers at this time. They go out, for the last few months, they go out and they don't get a bite on croakers, or maybe two, two bites, or maybe catch a couple dinks. It costs over $100 for these folks to drive down here, and 100 or more dollars to go out in the boat. It costs over $1,000 to go out with a guide, and they don't do much better. And while I'm going through the, this, well, the reason I'm talking about this is when these people stop coming, slow down, it's going to affect the, the economy of all the coastal cities immensely, every, every layer of businesses. The Parks and, Life, Parks and Wildlife has put out a new, the new set of rules. It's three trout from 15 to 20 inches and one over 30 inches. I don't know how many of you fish with croakers, but you get a bite, you give them a little slack, you set the hook. That works real fine for smaller fish, but the larger fish, 20, 23, 26, they eat it all and they're gone. When you set the hook, you're going to get them in the gills or you're going to get them in the stomach and they're going to die. They're very fragile fish. When they bleed, they die. And there's going to be a lot of these fish thrown back, which is going to be frustrating. It's going to the law and... Uh, it, it, it's the law, but that's going to happen. But uh, we're going is this compromise will not get our fishery back to where it needs to be. I've talked to Dr. Chris Mace at the hatchery over here. He, he agrees. All his biologists say it, it won't work. You cannot replace the fishery with, the, with, nat with nature. can't happen. We have too many porpoise. We have too many... Too many, uh, uh, too many fishermen increasing pressure all the time, so, as well as nature is not very friendly lately. Uh, what I would like for y'all to do is to contact the, the congressman in the name of the city and order them. You, we send them hundreds of thousands of dollars every month, right? We need to get fisheries put in and We appreciate it, Mr. Webb. Thank you. I was going to say, I have a list of people here that can call on me and I can answer questions. Yep, City Secretary, we try to take care of that. <laughs> that was a joke, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, consent agenda. Is there anyone wishes to have either one of these items removed from the agenda? If not, do I have a motion on the consent agenda? I have a motion. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any further question? If not, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous.
Item number five, consider the adoption on second and final reading of ordinance number 1934, amending the official zoning map as stipulated under article 4.1 of the city of Rockport zoning ordinance number 1027 by changing the zoning of land from R2 second single family dwelling district for property located at 424 Eloise Street, also known as lot 14 Civiletto subdivision to R5 second multifamily dwelling district repealing all ordinances in conflict therewith providing for severability and providing an effective date speaker any changes since first reading no, okay, thank you. any question council i do have a question uh, for sure if you could should i wait for her to get up here yeah that way her answer is recorded uh, the question I had, if we choose to go from R2 to R5 um, in that, uh, on this particular instance, um, the, what I'm concerned with is, is the other folks that might be in an R2 that have a larger lot, um, quite a bit larger, that you know, would then request to go to R5, and that would allow them to, to do things that are, seem to be outside of a single family neighborhood, you know, multifamily apartment complexes, things that we probably don't have uh, in our uh, zoning intent and what have you in yes. master plan. Can you, can you elaborate and tell me what well, we have to protect us from that happening? Yes, sir. So this particular rezone is only to bring them into compliance for what it's been being used as all these years. Um, it, it's not because they want to do apartments or anything. And this particular lot is 9,000 square feet. Now, the R5 zone requires a minimum of 5,000 square feet of lot and 2,200 square feet of lot per dwelling. So this particular lot would only be able to have four dwellings, and that's if they took away what they have and built new. Um, another person wanting to come in and rezone to multifamily R5 on their lot would have to present engineered drainage, um, um, water and sewer usage uh, and increases, and it's, it, I don't believe that would pass. And we have the not. ability if, 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 again, if the situation is that they're in a neighborhood of single family homes all around and, and we would have the ability to stop an apartment complex from going right in the middle of that and, and what could be. Well, that, that depends. If they come in with one lot, yes, they would not have the square footage required. Um, they would have to come in with some acreage to be able to do an apartment complex. Because like I said, it's required to have 2,200 square feet of lot per dwelling. So none of those lots are big enough to do that. And if they came in with acreage in that area, with a plan, with their engineered drainage plan, with their civil plan all approved, then- And they, we would have the notifications to oh, all the neighborhood. Okay. Then, then you, right. would, you would be obliged to- So there's safeguards in place. I, I believe so. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? If not, do I have a motion? Move to approve out of five as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? If not, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Item number six, consider the adoption of the second final reading of ordinance number 1933, amending chapter 98, traffic and vehicles, article six, golf carts, off highway vehicles, Section 98-134, authorized inspection facility and entity requirements, providing a savings clause, severability clause, and an effective date. Chief, any changes since last time? Have no changes. Any questions, Council? Chief, I had a question that was asked me. This just increases our ability, uh, the inspection facilities, correct? It increases the <coughs> inspection facilities if we have applicants uh, that apply for the process. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, any but, any uh, golf cart sales, golf cart maintenance, or auto maintenance facility in Aransas County is eligible to apply. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, I move to approve item six. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further question? Uh, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Item number seven, consider approval of the first reading of an ordinance 1935, amending code of ordinances chapter 94, taxation, article four, hotel occupancy tax, and add two additional 
Texas tax code uses categories repealing all ordinances in conflict therewith, providing for severability and providing an effective date. That's a good one. So this arrives from the last meeting where we um, discussed with you the different hot text, um, two other categories that we were not using according to our ordinance. And so by adopting this, this would put the two categories in which are the signage directing tourism, and then it would also allow for sporting, promotional of sporting events in a county with a population <clears throat> under a million. Okay. Questions, Council? I move to approve item seven as presented. I second. have a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? She's beating me on the second. <laughs> My thing, Andrew. Hurry up. <laughs> if there's no other question, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. <clears throat> Consider approval of first reading of ordinance 1936, amending ordinance number 1932, which amended the 2023 2024 budget beginning October 1st, 2023, and ending September 30th, 2024, repealing all prior ordinances in conflict with providing for publication, providing for an effective date. This is related to $2,322.65 police department training account. Mr. Sorrell. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, yes, uh, we usually receive one allocation of the uh, Texas uh, Law Enforcement Education Funds. This year we received a second one, ostensibly because uh, the 88th legislator, legislature approved an additional amount. Uh, the police department would like to appropriate that for this year's use um, and, and the restricted funds uh, for training. Okay. All right. Questions, council? Not, do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve agenda item number eight. I have and a motion, I have a second. I have a second right now. <laughs> this is fast me. Uh, any questions? People, if they had a question. <laughs> If there are no further questions, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It is unanimous. Item number nine, consider the approval of resolution 2024-10-R declaring certain city property surplus and authorizing the sale of said property to further public purpose and establishing an effective date. This comes from the vehicle maintenance. There he is. I'm Del Marnett, uh, so this for this position of surplus property, this is a transparent way of disposing any property that's been used that's uh, used for livestock. Okay. So that basically is all this okay. is. So. And we've been doing this for years and years and years. We've been doing this for years. So. Any questions, Council? If not, do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve agenda item nine as I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a second. Any further questions? If not, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Okay. Item number 10, consider the approval of the construction change directive number one for the city hall project and the amount not to exceed $124,735.31. Kimberly. Yes, Mayor and Council, thank you. Um, just to further ask if y'all have any questions regarding the difference between a change order and a change directive, because that understood. Okay. So Can just. You explain it there first? All right, so a change order is what we've been doing to date, and uh, we've done that for items one through nine, and those actually change the dollar figure for our contract agreement. Uh, whether it's a plus or minus, it changes the directive and, um, excuse me, changes the total dollar figure we are committed to. A change directive says we both want to go in the same direction, but we kind of disagree on the cost of said direction. So we're going to continue to negotiate it, but we're keeping the wheels rolling. So we're keeping the project moving and while we're negotiating some of those costs, not only with Teal, but with PGAL or whomever else we're working with. So that makes sense. All right. 
um, on the change directives that we have in uh, with y'all today. Uh, the first one was doing solid surface windows in um, the main areas where we have the utility billing clerks, municipal court, and uh, parks offices. So making sure we had, uh, instead of using PLAM, we are utilizing uh, courts. And then item number two was interior power ceilings. Some changes were made up there. That one was actually no cost to us. Um, item number three was adjustments to some masonry and where the masonry and concrete meet on the, uh, the loggia up on the second floor. Um, item number four was the spray foam insulation in the attic. This is again one of those things where we're still negotiating with individuals. However, um, it was removed from the BE and now it's being put back in, excuse me, BE value engineering and now it's being put back in at this date and time. Um, item number five is adding electricity for the sinks in the restrooms. Um, that was missed at one point, so we're adding those back in. Um, Item number six, modifying millwork in the administrative workroom. And it's basically, we, once it was installed, they were like, that doesn't fit our copier. So we're having to make a small adjustment there. Item number seven um, is the wood chair, chair rail during uh, value engineering. We removed chair rails from most of the rooms, but this was one of the rooms where we left, um, you've got wallpaper on the bottom and paint on the top. You need something to kind of transition through that area. And so we're needing to put that back in, in this room only. And item number eight is the backsplash in the break room upstairs uh, for the staff area. Um, it was designed, it was made into PLAM uh, during value engineering, but during, at this time, it was needed to be uh, a more tile uh, instead of PLAM to coordinate with the rest of the building. So those are... At this time, a maximum of $124,735.31. We are still negotiating those fees, but we need to move forward, and we would request that the council approve this con um, change directive. Any questions? Questions? Uh, do you think this will be the way we move forward is the change directives? <clears throat> if we have... Sorry. If we have other issues moving forward, do you think uh, this is kind of the, the road we're going to go down? Yes, probably. Okay. I, it, I mean, it's it's not unfair to either change order just because we I don't it, I think this is better. Uh, do you see more of these coming between now and yes, sir. the end? There, there's still a few items we're, we're working on. Um, what we want, where we want it, and type of thing. So they can't very well give us an estimated price before we finalize uh, the design of those pieces. Anyone else? And just to clarify, is this still within budget, or now we over budget with these changes? So it is still within the overall budget of the process, but we did set some money in 2018. Some money was put into reserves. And that those are, if we have to uh, still draw down, we are still within budget this month. Okay. Other questions? I uh, would just like to say thank you so much for, for keeping uh, everybody abreast of the situations and, and the money's being spent and, and Not making problem. everybody uh, stick to their guns on the dollar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Really. I have a motion. I make a motion to approve um, agenda item number 10. 10, yes. As read. A second. It is 10. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? I lost there. Right? <coughs> if not, we'll call for vote or one. Aye. Or two. Aye. Or three. Aye. Or four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Item number 11, consider approval contract with Rentalscape platform contract for the short-term rental ID and monitoring program for the purpose of performing certain data analytics services to include the registration, management, hotel occupancy tax payments, and notifications regarding the City of Rockport short-term rental program. Ms. Dietrich. Yes, sir. So this is the program that we've been referencing throughout this STR um, project. Um, Rentalscape 
has more options than the Granicus one had. Um, we didn't get a bid from Granicus. We got the tips. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I am totally uneducated in the buy board system and the how all that works. But the bid we got from this was through tips. Help, help me. SHI, yes. <laughs> it's a cooperative, yes. Just like by the state, so it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to go out first. Yeah. Thank you. I feel stupid even trying to talk about it. But um, this is the request for that program. And what I've, what I've told folks and what my plan is, our plan is, once we get this up and running and we, we know what we're doing, I want to hold a town hall and invite, personally invite all the real estate companies Put it in the newspaper on our website for anybody that wants to come and walk them through how this program works and how they go on there and get registered or um, re-registered and schedule their inspection so that it's not a huge mass mess. So that's my plan. Anyway. Okay. Education is always important, and I, I do like that idea of having to go and talk to the individual partners that would be dealing with that and helping them get on board and learning this. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Just to again, for other people, I know we just say these words and people are like, "What bid board? Can you explain that a little bit? What what that is? So it actually goes for bids, and we are learning different costs. Right. right, it's a cooperative purchasing agreement where they've already done the competitive bidding for us. Okay. So. A, a third party has bid it and put the best value and everything up there and, and you can basically choose from items legally within the Texas purchasing law you can choose from things on the buy board because they have been competitively bid already so um, okay. just know we throw out words and people are probably like what, what is yep. that so I just want to explain what that is a little bit well, yeah, I, I really do. I really thank you for wanting to do workshops. I think that's great to have that knowledge out there and help needed. them so yeah. they'll help you guys in the long run any other questions or concern? If not, if we need to move. Make a motion to approve agenda item number 11 as read. All right, I have a motion. I have, I have a second. I'll second. I have a second. He had his hand up, but you got there first. Yep. So you did good. All right, motion second. Any further questions? If not, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. City manager update. Uh, this, this month, you don't have to listen to me. We have our, our city engineer here to update you on the projects that we're working on. You guys have How are you doing? Hi, my name is Anthony Allen. I work for Urban Engineering. I've met uh, most of you guys on the last council meeting. Mayor, uh, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Um, so Thanks some of the projects me. we're working on, right now we're working on engineering plan and plat reviews. Currently we're working on the Maria PUD, Plan Unit Development um, Review, Palms Plat Review, and Daniels Forest sub Subdivision Plat Review. Uh, currently working on the Wastewater Treatment Plant Discharge Permit Renewal Agreement. Uh, sent that over to the city staff today for the 2025 uh, discharge permit. Re uh, it's, it's required in 2025. Uh, right, so. Current project under construction is the wastewater treatment plant improvements. Um, the grit removal, we're waiting on the return of new grit equipment that was sent back last week to be regalvanized due to quality condition of the uh, metal components when delivered. The digester and thickener um, was ex excavated four feet down uh, for the foundation, and we're waiting on well point equipment to be able to go deeper. The new office slab has been formed up and we're waiting on the electrician and the plumber to get their underground piping installed. A uh, contractor has saw cut the existing concrete pavement um, at the existing office in preparation for removal to allow the electrical duct bank installation and the electrician is planning to get Newberry conduit uh, duct bank installed from the existing office to the new office. Um, Urban Engineering has been receiving and reviewing material submittals and RFIs. To date we have received 47 submittals and three RFIs. The Gagon lift station, new 12 inch force main uh, from Gagon lift station to the wastewater treatment plant project is complete. Final pay estimate and documentation was submitted to the city on May 21st, 2024. Um, we're currently working on analysis for a future second wastewater treatment plant. 
Mark Maroney, our most senior engineer, has been working with Candace Brandon to complete the flow and capacity analysis on the existing plant, and our goal is to complete the report and have a meeting with city staff in two weeks. So some of the uh, future projects that we're working on are the Enterprise and Maple drainage improvements. The plans have been submitted to FEMA for review. 100% uh, plans are completed, and we're just waiting on FEMA comments to move forward with that project. Um, the Texas Department of Agriculture funded uh, Kluge Trail and Holly Road reconstruction. We are working on an agreement with GrantWorks. Um, that's the final piece GrantWorks needs to uh, move forward with design and then construction. So we'll have that agreement over to them by next week. Um, the FEMA hazard mitigation uh, generator applications. There are three generator applications for six generators. Application one for Rockport Fire Station and Highway 188 Pump Station. Application two for Ivy Lane Pump Station and Highway 188. It's a, a, another Highway 188 Pump Station. And application three for mobile generators to power the city's lift stations. So applications are currently under FEMA review. Um, TC or the TDEM representative Joseph Quilenton actually met at a conference last week on Thursday and went as he was walking out the door, went and shook his hand, and said, Hey, how about our generator applications for Rockport? And he said City of Rockport should have no problems getting that approved. So those were the words, the exact words he told me. So <clears throat> um, Aransas County Basin 39 drainage improvements. Um, amendments are being processed by the GLO, and this is an Aransas County project um, that was initially in the um, City of Rockport scope of work for the CDBG, and I, I, I'm not sure the details, but it was removed and then put back into the Aransas County's responsibilities. And, uh, but this is a uh, installation of 4,250 foot of ditch cleaning and reshaping, 50 linear feet of box culvert, and 9,500 square yards of pond cleaning and reshaping at uh, Rancis County Basin 39. Um, last project currently under construction is the uh, CDBG funded drainage citywide drainage improvements. Um, I've got it. Let's see. Uh, so project one, trailer ch and Thule drainage improvements. Construction has not yet started. Project four, South Ann and East Hackberry drainage improvements. Contractor is approximately 95% complete. Remaining activities are seeding and fertilizing, curb repair, cleaning and restoration. Project five, market at church drainage improvements. Contractor is 42% complete. The remaining activities are the installation of 80 linear feet of 30 inch RCP. Construction of inverts and raising the junction boxes to grade, installation of outfall at Aransas Bay, and asphalt pavement repair. Project six, Sabinal, Ann, Orleans, Laurel, and Magnolia drainage improvements. Contractor is 42% complete. The remaining activities are Gear Underground has completed the remaining utility work, not completed by Burnside. Um, they're waiting on a resolution for the latent defects. Um, we are, we did, compile a 120 page report for the city uh, to assist in that um, effort uh, for the latent defect um, conversations with the bonding company. So we just got that over to the city last week. So I believe that's it. Uh, great. You guys have any questions? Anthony? Anyway, we can get that to Andy, yes. A and lot of information that we it, can put on our, like, just for us and put it on the city page yeah. as well so people can read on it. I apologize, it was requested last time, and I was out all week last week, and uh, was tried to scramble to, to kind of figure everything out over yesterday and today, so I will have that for everybody on the next um, council meeting, and I can compile this and put it in a comprehensive list for everybody after this meeting, so later this week. That would be great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand, I just, that would be really helpful, so we can digest I, I, I it can, a little bit more. I completely understand, yes ma'am. Thank you, yes, sir. Anthony, you mentioned uh, when you were talking about the repairs that are going on to the wastewater treatment facility that one of the components came back and failed inspection or something. Or? So, uh, and I don't know the exact details, but the galvanizing didn't look, didn't, was not satisfactory. So we got sent back for regalvanizing. 
Okay. Any significant delays with that that we're going to experience, or is it the vendors said, hey, it's our fault, we're going to take care of it? And yeah, I, I don't believe there's any kind of change order or anything like that um, that wasn't discussed. Uh, I haven't heard of any delays yet uh, off the top of my head. It's something I can ask and find out um, and provide with the, uh, the comprehensive list. So I'll, I'll get that question answered. As long as it's not going to slow down the repairs and cause any kind of an issue or shut down or anything. Yeah, and, and so the engineer, Mark Maroney, is the has worked at Urban Engineering for the longest out of anybody there. He's been there since before Jim Urban uh, was there, and it's Jim Urban's best friend. He designed, I think, that wastewater treatment plant and the one in um, wow. in Port Aransas. So it's it's in good hands. If he says it needs to get sent back, it needs to get sent back. Well, there, sounds like we got good eyes on it. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, another update, we had a, a, our construction manager, Neil Patel, come inspect the um, Garrett Underground work today, and. Um, he's uh, very involved, um, so it's a new asset we have to our company. We've never had a construction manager before, but he's more involved, putting eyes on the projects, and um, is a good asset to our team to help the city and us have successful projects. So. Thank you. Any okay. further questions? Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is council report. Board one. Uh, actually, I don't have too much to report this time around. I do want to uh, congratulate and formally welcome you, Matt. Thank you. To the team, so. All right. Board two. Board two. Um, my update is I've got a new accurate map uh, coming with all the edges of Ward two, and looking forward to getting out there and uh, meeting some folks I haven't met before. So, should have that new map here pretty shortly. Making progress. It's good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Or three. Nothing real big to report. Um, I, I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. Or four. Well, I have a couple things. No, uh, I went to the our um, chamber monthly meeting, and they are doing their annual team meeting of the gavel on June 11th. Um, so we have uh, Chad Lee is leaving, and then we have Amy Garcia coming in. So that is the event that they have to hold on every year, and it's pretty um, big and important. So if anyone's willing to go and support them, that's great. Um, there was the tree committee met um, last week and um, they discussed a location for our billboards. I think they decided on three different locations instead of one that cost a little bit more than the, the three altogether. And then um, they also discussed, uh, they reviewed the mitigation balance and just kind of went over those numbers. And then they discussed how to water the city plants a little bit better. I think a couple of them were concerned, but I know you guys are doing the best you can. So I'm hoping you guys find a solution on that. Um, and I think... <laughs> And then we had Memorial Day weekend. I think it was busy in town. Um, we had the Wine Fest. That was a great event. And it was just, uh, I think it went pretty well. Hopefully there wasn't too many disturbances or anything, but it was busy around here. So that's about it on my end. Um, along those lines, the Chamber Banquet is scheduled on um, June 11th, which is a meeting day. I think Shelly has gotten all, with all of you, but we'll have that meeting at 4.30. We'll start at 4.30. We'll keep the agenda light so everybody can uh, go home and get ready for the banquet. Uh, for me, we had Memorial Day gathering yesterday down at the uh, Veterans Memorial Park, and it was well attended. We had a lot of people there. Uh, we had a Korean War veteran there, which those guys are getting on up in years now. And I would have to just about say the same thing for a lot of our Vietnam folks, and that, that was my age group of folks. Some of those guys are really getting old. I don't know why they're doing that, but the rest of us are not. Uh, but there was a great group of people down there. Whoever the MC was did manage to miss one of the uh, local dignitaries that was there, and somebody pointed out that, that Pat was there, and I said, yes, Pat Rios, and it was Pat Russo, and they don't even look alike. So, so anyway, <laughs> Commissioner Russo was there, and I had to apologize for her for calling her Pat Rios. Um, but there was a great group of people there. We had a gentleman that was presented with a Purple Heart for his service and time he was injured, I believe, in Afghanistan when a Humvee he was in was blown up. Uh, we had a lot of dedicated people there that have a mass of military service in the service of our country. And it was pointed out Sunday by some folks at church that when those people took an oath, it was to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, 
And so many of those people died trying to do that. And it was good seeing the number of people that were there to honor the memory of those people. And if you didn't make it, try to make one of those things. They are, it, it's a very touching thing. There were a lot of tears in a lot of people's eyes before we got out of there good. But I appreciate that. City Council recessed and open meeting to reconvene an executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071, consultation with attorney. Seek the advice of an attorney about pending contemplated litigation or a settlement offer and on a matter in which the duty of the attorney for the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter. Number one, City Hall. Number two, Concho Street, General Land Office, GLO Drainage Projects. Number three, Data Pro Settlement. We are in executive session. It is 716.
We are back in regular session. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion. Motion and a second. We're adjourned. Go.